For years, scientists predicted a sleepy sun, but instead we're seeing one of the most active cycles in decades. Solar storms are intensifying, auroras are reaching unexpected latitudes, and our models are being challenged. What's happening above our heads, and what does it mean for technology, astronauts, and life on Earth? Let's find out. The sun is not just a distant ball of fire, it's a dynamic, living star whose magnetic moods ripple through the solar system. Every 11 years, its activity rises and falls in what we call a solar cycle. For centuries, astronomers have tracked sunspots, dark magnetic storms on the sun's surface, as a proxy for its behavior. When Solar Cycle 25 officially began in December 2019, the consensus was clear, this would be another weak cycle, perhaps even weaker than Solar Cycle 24, which itself was one of the mildest in 100 years. NASA and NOAA forecasts pointed to a modest peak sometime around 2025. The sun, it seemed, was dozing off. But the reality was different. Instead of a sleepy star, we got an awakening giant. By late 2021, sunspot counts were already exceeding predictions. Radio operators noticed unexpected disturbances. Space weather monitors logged sudden spikes in the solar wind. By 2023, the aurora borealis was dancing across skies as far south as Arizona, Spain, and Japan, places that rarely see northern lights at all. These were not isolated events. They were part of a pattern, the sun was running hotter, faster, and more magnetically intense than forecast. The turning point came in 2024. A series of powerful solar storms, some classified as G4, severe, on the NOAA scale, disrupted high-frequency radio, satellite communications, and even airline flights at high latitudes. People who had never seen an aurora before were treated to curtains of green and red light rippling overhead. This wasn't the script scientists had written. The models had missed something. To understand what was going on, NASA researchers like Jamie Jasinski and Marco Velli, pronounced Velli dug deep into the data. They went back to 2008, just before the last solar minimum, and compiled a full suite of solar wind parameters, speed, density, temperature, pressure, and magnetic field strength. Satellites, increased solar wind and CMEs can swell Earth's upper atmosphere, increasing drag on satellites and shortening their lifespans. In February 2022, SpaceX lost 40 Starlink satellites during a mild geomagnetic storm. Astronauts, higher radiation levels pose a greater risk to crews aboard the International Space Station and to any future missions to the Moon or Mars. Power grids, strong geomagnetic storms can induce currents in power lines, damaging transformers. The famous Carrington event of 1859 set telegraph stations on fire, a smaller storm in 1989 knocked out power across Quebec. Aviation and AMP, navigation, HF radio blackouts disrupt flights at high latitudes, and GPS signals can degrade during intense storms. All of this means space weather isn't just for scientists, it's a practical issue for governments, companies, and ordinary people. So why is the sun so much stronger than expected? Researchers are exploring several possibilities. Cycle interference, some models suggest that overlapping magnetic waves inside the sun can interfere constructively, boosting activity unexpectedly. Polar magnetic fields, the strength of the sun's polar fields before a cycle begins is a key predictor of how strong that cycle will be. Perhaps we underestimated them in 2019. Internal flows. The sun's differential rotation and meridional flows, plasma streams running from equator to poles, may have shifted in ways we didn't catch. Randomness, the sun is a chaotic system. Sometimes, despite the averages, it just does something different. Whatever the cause, it's a vivid reminder, a star is not a clockwork machine. It's a turbulent, living entity. We're lucky to be observing this active cycle with a fleet of cutting-edge instruments. Parker Solar Probe is diving closer to the sun than any spacecraft in history, sampling the solar wind where it's born. Solar Orbiter is imaging the sun's poles for the first time, helping us understand the magnetic field that drives the cycle. ACE and SCIVA sit at the L1 point between Earth and the sun, providing real-time solar wind data and storm warning. Ground-based observatories like the Daniel K. Inouye Solar Telescope in Hawaii are resolving sunspots at unprecedented detail. 
these tools give us a front-row seat to a cycle that's rewriting the textbooks. Solar Cycle 25 is expected to peak between 2024 and 2025. If the current trend holds, the maximum could rival some of the strongest cycles of the past century. Governments and space agencies are already updating risk assessments, hardening satellites, and coordinating power grid protections. For individuals, the stakes are lower, but the spectacle is greater. More solar storms mean more auroras at mid-latitudes. If you've never seen the northern or southern lights, the next two years may be your best chance. It also helps calibrate our climate models. The sun's output varies only slightly in total energy, but even small changes can affect Earth's upper atmosphere and space environment. By studying this cycle in detail, we may improve our ability to predict not just space weather but its cascading effects on technology and society. We thought we knew the sun's script. We thought we could predict its moods. But the last few years have shown how easily our models can be upended. A solar cycle 25 climbs higher and stronger, every flare, every CME, every shimmering aurora is a message from our star, I am not done surprising you. The challenge now is to listen, to learn, and to be ready for what comes next. If you want clear, evidence-based explorations of space science without hype, subscribe and join the conversation. What do you think is driving the sun's unexpected surge? Could we be entering a period of heightened activity, or is this just a short-lived spike? Drop your thoughts below. Thank you for watching my channel.